beat the Trash Court in episode 6. This is our biggest show. I said it last week, but I'm saying it again. This is our biggest show to date. We've got a massive, massive guest, Big Fish Pool for us this week. Caden McDonald is in the panel today. And not to mention, the top eight has absolutely been turned on its head this week. We have got a big week of footy to get into with another big two weeks coming up. So, with that being said, I reckon we get straight into the round review. Kick us off, boys. All right, let's get into it. And, wow, it was a big week in footy, starting with the Ds and Swans. Now, I wouldn't be lying, I was very, very confident. And this round absolutely just turned on its head. Swans got up in an ugly display. Both teams were off the four-day break, so no surprises there. Swans ended up being in control most of the game and won out about 25-point winners. That's all there is for that game. Next game was a very intriguing affair. GWS and Carlton. Carlton really needed this win, and so did GWS. And in the end, Carlton controlled three quarters of the game, being about 15 points ahead, looking good. And just the GWS had that last spur at the end of the three quarters and the, and the fourth quarter and actually won, ran out nine-point winners. So it was a good game to watch. A little bit ugly at times, but it was a good game nonetheless. And then this was an ugly win for Brisbane on a Friday night spectacle against Collingwood. The game didn't have a lot to show, but it was close, mainly because it was low scoring. Mason Cox popped up with two. And in the end, I think Brisbane ran out winners by about 10 points. Yeah. And just just to round out the last game, we had Port Adelaide and North. Now, not much thought was going into this game. Not many people would have been tuning in. Unless you go for Port, because let's be real, there's no North fans. <laughs> and, um, well, Port ran out 36 points in the end. But it was, to be fair to North, a good effort. They they did come to play, but Port's pressure was too much. And young blokes like Zachary Butters throwing their body around just just showed that Port are potentially a very good chance. They haven't they haven't done much wrong to date. I'm, I'm one of the people, along with many others, that don't quite believe in him, but... You know, the stats show that they're definitely a good chance. So, yeah, that's exactly all from me. Right. Um, now, I'll kick this one off. Sunday afternoon footy, St Kilda versus Hawthorne. And I've got to say, the Hawks gave me a hell of a scare as a Saints fan. But it was pretty much... it was The game came down to St Kilda's missed opportunities. We had about 14-odd behinds. Hawthorne had far less scoring shots than we did. And if we had to capitalise, we would have ran out at least five goal winners, but unfortunately, we only got the job done by 14 points. So a mature win by the Saints, but uh, we got the job done in the end, con- continuing our surge towards finals. I'll keep the round going now. Uh, we're going to go for Geelong versus Essendon, and as an oh. Essendon fan, no comment. Uh, next game, we had Bulldogs versus West Coast. Um, this was an absolute uh, great game. Um, Controversial at the end of the game. Touched on the line. I don't know. Um, it was touch and go. Um, but Bulldogs played better all game. Game Had way more scoring shots. Um, West Coast just didn't look themselves without a... Um, especially with their Nina Nui in the ruck. They could have really dominated the Western Bulldogs in the, in the middle, but um, struggled to do so. Um, and that's a big win for Bulldogs coming into finals. Hopefully they get a crack. Uh, next game was uh, Melbourne versus Fremantle. Uh, two weeks, two losses for the poor Ds, and you can nearly kiss finals goodbye um, with another loss to Fremantle. Uh, absolute slugfest over there. It was in Cairns, was it? Yeah, yeah two weeks in Cairns only... for the Ds. Yeah, Um yeah, they had their chances at the end there, but just couldn't capitalise. Um, no one could hold the ball. Um, special mentions to Adam Chera. Played probably one of the best games of his career. Um, 30 touches and a goal. And um, a he's all goal. class. And Not just any goal. He's a lovely it. banana. He put the yeah. dagger in the hearts of the D's fans. The last game I'll top off with is uh, oh. Crom versus GWS, the Adelaide Crows. Getting it done again. How good are they? Just, Book them in for they're finals. They're unbeatable. Tomorrow. They can't be beaten in September. They peak in September. Oh, they've been yeah, they know how to do it. Um, and they're looking dangerous to cause a lot of problems at the late stages of this um, season. Yeah. Um, 
It was a great game to watch, actually. Some big high-flying marks that we'll get into later. And um, GWS, boy, oh boy, can't afford to lose those ones. Yeah. And they've just let another one slip there. Uh, Adelaide coming clutch heavily for myself and Dees. Well, yep. keeps us in chance. To conclude the round, we had last night, we had Carlton versus Sydney. And this, this was a fair dinkum. It was an interesting game. Carlton yeah. were down by, I think, 37-odd points uh, around the halfway point of the game. And then they just put the foot on the gas in the, th- in the second half, just absolutely leaving Sydney for dead. Um, and then you can't, you can't help. They just, they just ran home with it due to uh, big man Matthew Cottrell, I think his name is. We'll get more into that, into the highlights. But he was Remember the name. Goal. And luckily they did uh, get over the line, Carlton, because there was a very, very controversial free kick towards the end of the game. And I was very glad that old mate missed this goal because that was a clear... Uh, he was paid a high tackle and it was a clear case of ducking. So not good form from him. And oh. to conclude the round, we had Brisbane versus Gold Coast at the Gabba. The, the, the Brisbane fans are getting more and more up and about every week, especially given the inclusion of the grand final being played there this week. Oh, this year, sorry. Um, it was a pretty pretty tight contest for the first couple of um, first couple of quarters, but then uh, in midway through the third quarter, the Brisbane Lions just showed how classy of a team they are and ran away with it by 45 points. Classy performance from the Lions. However, they did cop a couple more injuries, which could be a uh, interesting factor come finals with them losing decent players uh, week in, week out. Jared Berry suffering a shoulder injury. So, yep. that concludes the buys. We are into we are in for a big two weeks of footy in the coming two weeks. So, uh, yeah, settle in. It's the time to tune in. It really Any is. Any footy fans out there, now's the time to watch. And now we're going to move on to the round highlights. Now, I'll lead us off here. I'm going back to the uh, GWS versus Adelaide game. There was a, quite a few good marks, but none better than I reckon the mark of the year so yeah. far. Bobby Hill, take an absolute beauty on top of the two Ruckman. Um, out of nowhere, there's Mick Haynes just lobbed one up on the boundary and up he goes. And um, he got on top and then he just bounced even further up. Mm. And if there's no more better marks than that this season, I reckon I'll book him in because there hasn't been a great deal of big marks this season. Yeah, he got his fair share of frequent fly points on that one, fair to say. Dees, what was your highlight for the week? Now, the only highlight I could find in any of the Melbourne games was big Jack Viney. He's, he's done it consistently throughout his career, but this really, you know, woke the AFL world up to how tough he is. Going back with a flight, bit of an errant kick from Toby Bedford. I think it was Luke Ryan had his name all over it. Maybe another Frio player, maybe. And Jack Viney just threw his body at it, got his face absolutely poleaxed, went down, Commentators were all were all covering their eyes, but sure enough, Jack Viney gets back up straight away, acts like nothing happened. So, yeah, he's a different. A good breed courage from Melbourne would be good if a few more Melbourne players stuck their heads out like that next week. But oh, we'll <laughs> yeah, see. yeah, exactly right. And uh, my highlight for the week came in the Carlton versus Sydney game, as we mentioned earlier. Matthew is is his name Matthew? Is it? Is, am yeah, I oh, Matthew no, Cottrell. We, we, oh, yeah. it's, it's, he hasn't been, he's he been around long enough for, for us to know his name. But he sealed the deal, first of all, with a brilliant mark and a clutch goal giving Carden the lead. And then he just stands up and gives him the... <laughs> he, was, <laughs> he was up and about. I tell you what, he was... Uh, he put the Carden over the line and that should uh, get him a couple more games that he would have expected at his Carlton career. So great, great performance from the big... Uh, whatever your name is. <laughs> And now we're going up to the big section. Here we go. Katie McDonald coming in now. Um, King of the YouTube, AFL YouTube scene. Yeah, here and here he is. Welcome to the show, mate. Lads, how are we? Um, oh, I, first of all, I want to apologise. I was this close to putting a suit on. I was very close to putting a suit on. And then it got a bit warm in my room and I pulled out. So I'm just, I'm underdressed. I'm in casual clothes, but I hope that that's okay. No, nah, we like uh, to see our guests uh, 
I just with the casual walk because as you as you say, the host it's the host with the most here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, we'll start off. It's actually an interesting topic. We'll start off with, um, with our first few shows. We uh start off with a bit of cricket stats. Now we've located a few cricket stats from you, Caden, from back in the day. Yep. yep. Twenty-one matches, ninety-one runs, at a batting average of six. Mm, Talk me yeah. through this. What went wrong yeah. in the junior career? Look, it was really frustrating. Every time I'd go out to bat, um, the best bowlers would come on and um, they'd come from both ends. And, um, yeah, just short and sharp stuff would usually get me. Um, I once went out, actually, there was this uh, kid that went to my school and he could not, he could barely roll his arm over, let alone release the ball. And he bowled this, this ball on a wet day at Janja Cricket Oval and it bounced twice. And I'm like, this is amazing. This is going for serious runs, but my uh, my cashmere willow didn't quite middle it, and I got caught at mid on, oh, and that probably summed up my that summed up my career. And uh, yeah, geez, I've been trying to get onto my cricket to get some of those stats down, but they, they won't budge. Yeah. <laughs> oh, to right. be fair, you did you did have a good run with the ball though. Um, eight wickets, uh, bowling average of fifteen, and best bowling of two for three. That's not bad. Yeah, look, you know. Uh, the leggies back in the day, really just top spinners, if we're going to be honest. I did not have anything else up my sleeve. Uh, but yeah, I used to bowl the leggies and um, look, I, I thought I was important, uh, you know, getting my one over and batting at nine. But anyway. <laughs> yeah, we've got, a, we've got one of our panellists is an avid D's fan, just like yourself. Oh, and yes. He's keen and eager to rip into you about how the D season is going. So we'll let you, we'll let you have a, a D's to D's conversation. With him, yeah, these boys have heard plenty, play enough from me rambling on about the D's, especially this last two weeks. So I just want to hear your opinion on uh, the whole season, but in particular the last two weeks and what you think's happening down at the D's camp. Uh, Jesse, mate, well, you know, one brother to another. It's um, it is heartbreaking. It is, yeah, um, yeah I, I, I don't know. I, I wish I had an inner sanctum scoop, but I don't quite. So from the outside, it just it looks like we're just a middle of the road team at the moment. Like, and everyone sort of had high expectations after 2018 and thought, you know, when a team makes a prelim, they should make a grand final next year. But even in 2018, there was two rounds to go. And I think we were sitting eighth or ninth. Like we weren't a great team that year. Um, you know, pinched a couple of uh, wins late, got to fifth, probably looked, I think we excelled. I think we overachieved that year, which was unreal, but, um, yeah, it just wasn't sustainable. So I think we've been a middle-of-the-road team for a couple of years, and I think we're a middle-of-the-road team going up, um, I hope. I hope we haven't peaked. But, um, yeah, so it, it is sort of like a frustrating time for me personally where we're in this, like, holding pattern of, like, is it going to click? None of us are sure if it's going to click. We all think it will. The list's too good to be playing, um, you know, losing to 14th and 15th. So, yeah, it's frustrating, but... Uh, I just hope they finish the year off strong because I'd be really disappointing if we lose the last four. Yeah, that would be killer. Yeah, <laughs> consistency, I think, is just the most annoying thing for all fans. It's been, yeah. for most of my life, well, watching the footy life, you know, we'll turn it on for three quarters, but then just that consistency lacks. But, you know, plenty of positivity still around the group, so we can look yeah, forward to that. Yeah, 100%. I personally think... Um, yeah, and I was saying this earlier in the year, I think we're closer than what people think. And I know it's frustrating that we haven't taken that next step, but I remember Port Adelaide for ages was sitting ninth or 10th. And then the next year we're promising big things. And then the next, you know, they'd sit ninth or 10th and everyone was like, Ken Hinckley out, Ken Hinckley out. And you just got to keep them together, that group together to take the next step. I remember for years, um, Damien Hardwick was copping it because he couldn't win a final. They were getting to like elimination finals, getting kicked out. They kept that group together and they succeeded. The same thing with Nathan Buckley. He used to cop it. Um, so I, I hope, you know, we're like those teams. And, um, you know, I, I hope we're on the brink of something. And I, I don't think getting rid of Goody and starting again would really help. I remember, like, the joke about the Ds having six coaches in five years or whatever. I, you know, I, I hope they stick together, can um, add to the group and, you know, hopefully jump up sooner rather than later. Jeez, Jesse, it must be like looking into a mirror for yourself. I've not met another guy who shares the same opinions as yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's definitely good to uh, 
hear a more calming presence because um, in my household, it definitely gets very angry around the TV when yeah. uh, the Ds come on <laughs> and yeah. confusion almost. You right. take the frustration out on us boys too. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's Actually, true. For our sake, the D's uh, have a good <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, my I think mates that would be nice opposite. for the whole world. Yeah, my mates um, incite the violence. They'll just come to me telling me how bad we are and, <laughs> you know, Viney's leaving. I don't know. I just cop it. Oh, so, um, don't get us wrong. Yeah, at least you guys are a good sounding board. <laughs> yeah, no, you, don't, you don't want to know when the Saints and D's uh, finish that nail biter. I, I had to I had to leave my phone for twenty minutes and I come back to absolute abuse from this man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a great night. That was yeah. absolute scenes. Um, now moving on, the AFL season coming towards the pointy end. What are your predictions and insights for the overall premiership winners and and any any smokies to uh make their way through the finals ranks? Uh, it's a tough one. I, I don't know if it's the year of the smoky. I, I, like, I watched this season and anything could happen, though, to be fair. Um, at one stage, West Coast are going to walk the flag in and now they just look horrific over on the eastern uh, side of Australia. Um, Geelong are always the quiet achiever, which is frustrating because I hate the Cats. But, um, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, like they're just going about their business the way they do every year. Are they a potential, you know, threat? Yeah, but they are every year. So I don't know what's different the last few years. Um uh, the Lions probably are in the box seat because they're at home. So a part of me starts worrying about, um, well, not worrying. I, I won't have to worry. I'll be, you know, f- feed up watching it with ease. But, um, you know, a part of me goes, yeah, the Lions are a fair threat. But I'd I like to see Port do it. I think um, they've, they've taken that leap. And they're a team that I've always chucked the pretender tag on because they always threaten to make finals and come ninth and tenth. So, um, yeah, I think the power are a real crack. And, I wonder if they'll get some games in Adelaide as well because they haven't ruled out playing some finals yeah. in Adelaide, I don't think. Yeah, that's true. That'd be a game changer. Oh, it's the night grand final, so it doesn't affect you too much now. <laughs> mm, mm. Yeah. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll move along from the footy side of things and we'll focus a bit on to uh, your YouTube career. So, uh, YouTuber to YouTuber. Um, I'd just like to know how, uh, how you got going because you're, you're known as one of the bigger fish in the AFL uh, YouTube world at the moment. So... How'd you get it started and get to where you are at the moment? Uh, potentially big fish in a little pond, I think. Um, you know, a lot of the YouTubers <laughs> that I look up to have billions and billions of subs. So, um, yeah, it's, it's cool that uh, people are starting to get on board with the channel. I've been chipping away at it for four or five years almost. Um, essentially, like, after school, I wanted to be in the media and I wanted to be on, um, on radio and I was applying for radio work and going to radio school, trying to get a gig and couldn't get a gig anywhere. So I was having a bit of a sook to my lecturer and he, um, my radio lecturer, which is a, a thing. Um, <laughs> and he, he goes, Oh, look, you know, there's no excuses in 2015. I think it was, he's like, look, there's no excuses. You can put out a podcast, you can put out um, content on YouTube. And it was something that I thought about since high school, but was just worried about what people would think. So once I got the sort of green light and the push, I was like, all right, I'm going to give it a crack and run with it. And mm. yeah, it's been a few years of doing it now. And it's, um, you know, it's had ups and downs. And, you know, at, at one stage I thought, oh, it's definitely going somewhere. And then after a year like this, it sort of, um, yeah, had a, had a bit of a leniency. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's cool. I, I, I can wake up and just chip away at my own videos every day. And it's, um, yeah. yeah, it's unreal. No, it's it's great. It's something that something you can just uh, just, just spend a little bit of time on. And in saying that, yeah. what's it like? Because you've gathered a bit more uh, following in the recent years. What's it like being having what is it forty odd k subs? Uh, yeah, it's um, it, it's sick. Like yeah. I remember sort of chucking videos out, and I I got to the early hundreds, and I was like, oh, just a thousand would be cool. Like just yeah. the you know that's that's four numbers that that would be unreal. And then I got the thousand. I'm like, Oh, well 10,000 would be ridiculous. And that's a lot of people. And to think that I'm sitting at 40, 40 odd now, like it is unreal. Um, and it's just cool. It's cool that, um, you know, putting stuff out consistently chipping away at whatever you want to do. Like I'm making niche football Australian rules videos and there's a market for that. So mm. it's cool knowing that like anyone out there who, chuck stuff out there's someone out there in the world that like there is a group and a community that will get around your videos 
And, um, you know, if people are getting around footy videos and people yeah. will get around bloody painting videos or whatever you want to make. So it is cool. Um, yeah, that's it. Yeah, no, that's great. Well, uh, In the future, do you yeah. see yourself uh, producing the, the footy more based videos? Because back in the day, when you were not a, when you were a bit more low key, you produced some uh, interesting videos, some great videos nonetheless. But like a catch twenty two, um, what else is there? We're all gonna die. Those kind of videos. Do you see yourself <laughs> sticking to the AFL route these days, or do you ever think you're gonna go back to just the goofy, the goofy music mm. videos? <laughs> they were iconic Please. in many ways. I'm not sure if any of you guys would have seen it, but I did some um, some skits with a couple of characters, Colin and Steve, and. Um, they are private and as private as can be <laughs> on my channel. There's a bloody guard, uh, you know, standing at the door of those sort of videos, locked in a safe. But um, look, I, I just wanted to make anything. Like, and I think that's something that I, I would encourage people to do is like, you know, I would have been, I, I was 20 when I started. Like, it's not like I started at 11. And some of the stuff that was coming out, it was making me and my mates laugh, but it was quite, quite quirky. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not sure. Like initially when the footy stuff started taking off, I was like, oh, I don't want to do footy because I don't want to get stuck in that, you know, that box. But then I'm like, well, I love footy. Like footy is one of my favorite things. So uh, every time I didn't want to make a footy video, I also thought of a footy video to make that I wanted to do. So I just kept running with that for a little bit. I I'm not sure. Like I've had plans where I go, all right, I'm going to do it for this amount of years and then switch it up. But it doesn't work like that. Um, the, the people that I look up to are like Joe Weller, KSI, and they all started with soccer and, and FIFA stuff. So, and then they just naturally, without any real, um, you know, without like a, a, a thought process, they've just naturally grown out of that sort of content. So I'm willing to ride the wave and, and see what happens. But I think I, I've got a little bit more to give than just footy stuff. But, you know, at the moment, I'm enjoying it. So Yeah, no, it's such a vers versatile platform. You can pretty much do whatever you want. And uh, yeah, for sure, to, to, to round out your YouTube stuff with um, one of your biggest uh, gigs must have been your work with the AFL in recent times. Can you just talk us through that? I'm, I, I was personally be, uh, quite a big fan of your, uh, your five games of footy in the one weekend. That was that must have been a pretty cool uh, gig to get a hold of. And you work with the uh, some of the AFL players. Just talk us through that. Yeah, it was um, it was ridiculous. Like, I felt um, like over the 2017 and 2018 I had a bit of momentum um but I'd, I I talked with the D's about doing stuff and um uh, we'd have meetings and video ideas and I pitched like goal recreations and stuff to them but you know they've got bigger fish to fry than <laughs> yeah. you know, have a bit of a kick with Dosso <laughs> on Gosh's Paddock so they kept slipping through the cracks and then um yeah the AFL hit me up on this weird as Twitter account I can't even find it anymore even when I go through my inboxes, but it was like at AFL um, connections or at AFL, um, you know, whatever it was, didn't have a profile picture, had five followers and said, Hey mate, I'm from the AFL. Just wondering if you want to make some videos. And I'm like, this is the dodgiest thing I've ever followed <laughs> up in my life. Like if he invites me to a, a back alley, I'm definitely going to see Patrill, but <laughs> I probably shouldn't. No. Uh, Anyway, it turned out to be legit. So I went and had a meeting at AFL House and they said, do you have any video ideas? And I was like, boy, do I have video ideas. So <laughs> I, I said, um, oh, look, I think it'd be a funny idea, you know, pushing the content. I was like, oh, the content would be great if me and my mate got to go to five games in five days. I think oh, that'd be a great you, video. You suggested it. Yeah, yeah. I, I sent him a text on a Friday. It was Friday night footy and I was like, oh, it'd be great to see how many games we could go to. So then they teed up um, Anzac Day weekend and then they just did everything. They got tickets, they got flights, they, um, oh, yeah, they got absolutely everything for us. And it was just ridiculous. Like me and Cooko sitting on a plane going to Adelaide one day. Yeah. Then the, the next morning we're off to Sydney and um, yeah, it, it was so much fun. No, that's, that's just, that's brilliant. Like you would have been shitting yourself uh, receiving something like that. You'd, you'd think your Twitter's gone for all, all money with this, someone of that caliber approaching you. But yeah, it turned out to be... Yeah, it was bizarre because I was like, if they hit me up on the AFL Twitter with the blue tick and hundreds and thousands of followers, I'm, I'm straight in. But it was, yeah, it was bizarre how it happened. And um, yeah, it was great because then we got, you know, a bit of momentum with the AFL stuff. We could, um, 
you know, pitch more more stuff to them. So I said, oh, well, I've done footy golf on my channel. I think that would be cool with footy players, especially if we could team up with them. And they're like, oh, yeah, sweet. Um, and then later on in the year, they wanted to do like a kid show on Aussie rules or AFL kids. Yeah. So by the end of like August, like this time last year, we were just under the pump um, filming stuff three or four days a week with like AFL players. And it was absolutely ridiculous. And I was so keen to do it this year, but um, yeah, we've uh, put the brakes on it. Yeah, no, that's, that's yeah. sick to have some like ongoing connection like that. It must be really good for you. Definitely a, bit, a little bit of a glow up from us uh, sneaking into the MCG rooms to uh, getting invited in by the top dogs <laughs> these days. Yeah, well, yeah. What was funny about that was um, like Cookson and I would just go down to the rooms every weekend. Like, and we would go to 20 to 25 games a season, even if like our teams weren't playing. Um, we'd all catch, um, like mum would give me money. We'd catch the train up. Cookson would get the under 16 ticket because he might've been 15. And then he would go to the next window and get another one. <laughs> so then I could sneak in because I was 17, but I looked like I was 12. Um, and then we'd just go to the rooms and just get photos and put it on our Instagrams. And um, it was quite funny that like when we did the five in five, they gave us a media pass to film yeah, in the cool. ground. And we said, can this get us into the rooms? And we asked <laughs> the AFL and the AFL said, oh, I don't know. So we just snuck in anyway. So um, <laughs> after games, we used our knowledge of how to sneak into rooms but we did it with a media pass and it actually worked. <laughs> like but like they didn't, inst- they didn't instruct us like, oh yeah, after AFL games, um, you know, go down and get uh, an interview with the players. We just took advantage of this media, you know, um, lanyard and-, and went down into the rooms. And it was funny when we got to like the SCG and Adelaide Oval, because we had no mm. idea how to do it, but we were just going down lifts and like trying our hardest to, to find a way in. And we were lucky enough to find them at both those grounds. No, that must be um, Next up, we'll finish off with a bit of uh, a few quick fire questions. Just some random quick fire questions. Um, just we'll go first of all, Petrarca or Gorn? <laughs> oh, jeez, Petrarca. <laughs> Petrarca, not bad. Uh, chicken crimpy shapes or barbecue? I'd say barbecue. <laughs> Barbecue, I'd yeah, back you in there. I'd take barbecue. I'd say pizza uh, over all of those, but barbecue. Oh, the pizza, guy. pizza. You might man can't get around it. I don't know. Um, some of your uh, most iconic videos, uh, parodies or goal kicking challenges? Goal kicking challenges by a mile. Yeah. yeah they, the they do better on the view front of things as well, too. Oh, yeah. And they're just so much fun. Like when you can. Beat your mates in a goal kicking challenge in front of two hundred thousand people. It's a good feeling. <laughs> um, KFC or Macca's? Jeez, people would probably think that that's an easy one, but um, I'm going to go what I think everyone loves. I'm going to say KFC, but geez, I, I do love like a, a chicken snack wrap from Macca's. To be honest, yeah, yeah fair call. Cool. What's your go to? What's your go to? Uh, go to order from KFC then? I'm boring. I go just an, uh, like an original, or maybe it's an ultimate box with the original uh, chicken burger. Oh, at least yeah, you, you can respect that. Yeah. You're not a does does the job. Team. Nah, not have a you, Have man. you tried the Zinger box? Yeah, I've had the Zinger box. Um, a little while ago, like maybe a month ago in COVID, I, I wasn't a Zinger man. I was a bit scared of the, the, the spice, but um, I went to get the original and they didn't have any. They were sold out. So I went to Zinger and it went down a treat. Yeah. As it always does. Uh, and a few of your recent videos lately, the old Fall Guys getting around it. Fall yeah. Guys or AFL Evolution? What's your pick? Um, geez. Even though it's an, a pretty subpar game, I love AFL Evolution. I could play that <laughs> yeah. forever and ever. Fall Guys does my head in a little bit. It, it is good fun, but um, yeah, geez, I'll always keep going back to Evo. Yeah. It's Hopefully, good um, with um, fans too. I think that's a pretty. Uh, Pretty nice idea you've come up with. Yeah, I wish it was, um, you know, a a selfless sort of act, but I just love beating people, to be honest. So uh, it's quite selfish. I love getting people on and, uh, you know, kicking 10 goals and getting the stream on. So, yeah. no, nah, it, it is good fun. It's um, it's great interacting with people like that. Yeah, yeah hope so. Now, just they, quickly, uh, just quickly, oh, the question yeah. everyone's been asking. It's been all around the streets. We need to know here. 
No meat on the cleats podcast. <laughs> when is he coming oh, back? Of course. <laughs> yeah, we I could. knew you'd say that. Um, yeah, it's a good question. Look, me and Cooks are the two of the laziest people you'll ever meet. Um, I, I want to make it a little bit better than what it was. Um, I don't know. I wasn't happy with the way it was filmed and the way it sounded, to be honest. So um, equipment will be coming soon. Um, I don't want to do any Zoom episodes. I wouldn't mind, you know, uh, waiting for COVID to take off and having a really good crack at it um, yeah, when we get the chance. But, but yeah, um, I know Cookson's keen and I'm pretty keen too. So it, it'll be it'll be soon. But I've said that for a while, but it will be soon. We both <laughs> love doing it. So, yeah. They're going, they're going off at the moment, the podcast as well. Um, especially the Australian ones like Jamo and Dylan have been elite over the last year. And, um, oh, yeah, they're, they're and put, they're, yeah, they're putting on a clip, uh, Jam and Deal. They're um, bloody breaking news with Cam McCarthy. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, that is, that is, yeah. Oh, they're on footy classified and getting quoted in the paper. Unreal. <laughs> yeah, love having you on the show, mate. Uh, we'd love to stay in touch with you and all the best with uh, what, what's to come in the future. Yeah, awesome. You guys are smashing it. So, um, yeah, it's cool. Like, I've, I've seen a couple of your videos and uh, I think they're class. So, Keep it up, keep up the pod, keep the suits on, and um, yeah, I'll bump into you guys soon, no doubt. Yeah, we'll yeah. do. Uh, thank you very much. No worries. Cheers. Have a good one, lads. Great to talk to you. See ya. Yeah, you too. Cheers. Oh, absolutely. Flunk it. Enjoy <laughs> the editing so there. You were panicking towards the end. Once HD decided to. Oh, God.